Many of us look too far afield for that sacred valley or for that lovely island in a distant sea where all will be peace and gentleness. Perhaps it's around the next turn of the road. If we search for it, perhaps it's right here in America. Let's follow two women traveling across the United States in a shiny aristocratic foreign automobile. Their eyes are on the road and they hardly glance at the painted mountains around them. Miss Peel, I'm afraid I have bad news. I'm lost. Now, how on earth did you do that, Sally? Time to get up. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Oh, it is lovely. Mm. We're high in the hills of Wyoming. And this house is built on a tiny island, just big enough for a house, really, at the fork of a creek. Uh, that's a ranch just over the footbridge, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Flying Tail Ranch. That's where Mr. Brent stays and works. The friendly-looking mountain is called Flashing Smile. And the rushing stream at our front door is Crazy Creek. And this tiny island and this lovely house are known as Rest and Be Thankful. You say that all again. It sounds like Stephen Vincent Benet. I wonder why Mr. Brent didn't want us to stay here. Why the house has been empty and dark so many years. It is very strange, isn't it, Sally? Oh, I feel so peaceful. It must be wicked to feel as peaceful as this. Well, I'm not sure what it is, Mrs. Peel. Maybe it's the stream. It talks to you. And everything. The trees, the wind, seem to murmur the name of this place. Rest and be thankful. Brent. Yes, ma'am. Well, I can't help wondering about Jim Brent. He's such a puzzle, such a mystery. You don't think he's always been a rancher in Wyoming? He's keeping something deep inside him. Something about this house. About his life before he came here. He never laughs, have you noticed? Oh, he's the warm, friendly sort of person who should laugh sometimes. But it never gets beyond a kind of far away smile. It's something about this house. Yes. As if he knew this house. And the house knew him. Like uh, two old, old friends. And they shared a secret together. Fender Atherton Jones never deserts an old friend. I am happy. It's more than just this place. It's the people. And it's something you hear, if you listen very closely, in the wind, in the stream, in the song. Mrs. Peel, a dreadful thing is happening to me. I think I'm in love. An eagle soars over Flashing Smile Mountain. It circles slowly, turning in a wide curve, traveling surely with pinions seemingly motionless. Then suddenly, a current of air lifts its wings and it sweeps up into the vast stretch of blue. As you watch it, your heart lifts also. A sense of peace settles over you. The pine forests are bands of rich velvet. 
and the mountain peaks, carved by wind and torrents, are giant cathedrals. Peacefulness. Do you know, in all these weeks, I've never heard Jim say an unjust or petty thing about another human being. There's no malice, no cynicism in his heart. There's a warmth in him that makes you warm. Like the glow of a fire. You know, I think he's a poet. And if you want to be a godmother to a writer, why don't you make Jim Brent write? Make him put down on paper his feeling for all the wonder and beauty in this world. Well, Margaret? Yes, and good riddance. I've come up here to the top of one of the highest mountains in Wyoming, where the air is soft and clear and sweet. I call this my thinking mountain. At night, you think of all the others who've sat, just as you have, around a dying fire in the wilderness. You lie back to sleep, but you don't sleep. Here, you're in the middle of nature, but what you think about is human beings. You see things so clearly as you lie out here, listening to the mountains and the night sky. Then the dawn comes up, and you see nothing but pink clouds below you. You look down at those clouds, and they're not the way you see them from Earth. They're a floor of gold and purple of colors you don't even know the names of. You begin thinking about the way the Greeks made their gods live high in the mountains. And you feel you could leap right forward into those clouds. You could fall 10,000 feet and not get hurt. And then you know you're a man again. Guards don't have to think about getting hurt. Oh, Jim. Jim. Go on, Scarlett. And having been hurt yourself, you know that you must never, ever hurt anyone else. I was married once, Sally. And I brought her to rest and be thankful. And she was unhappy here. She didn't belong. She wanted to be in New York and on the stage. And so we closed up the house. And it seemed wrong to see the windows dark and the house empty. I tried to make a go of it in New York. Some plants can only grow where they're loved, where their roots are. So I came back here without a wife, without love. With nothing but emptiness, Sally. The house has been dark ever since, until fate, or perhaps God, brought you to my house. I, I don't think I can read any more, Mrs. Peel. Oh, Sally, how wise we think we are, and how very little we really know. Here at the end, he says, he says he loves me, and it's made him happy to know that. We love his house. Oh. We've missed you, Jim. I've missed you, Sally. But I heard it. Wyoming whispered it to me. Welcome home, Jim. Welcome to a house that'll never be dark again. Jim, turn on all the lights. What? I want to see every light in this wonderful house shining bright. All right. Living room. Okay. Dining room. Kitchen. Every single room in the house. Front bedroom. Back bedroom. There. I thought I'd see the house shining again. Like this. It's more than lights, Jim. It's love. For a long time, I was afraid this old place 
had the wrong name. Oh, no, 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 Jim. I've never known, never before, what it really means to rest and be thankful. 